Men of Reddit, what do you think would be the worst thing about being a woman? Not being taken seriously when you have legitimate experience in a field. I personally experienced it as a male when I enrolled into animal husbandry and vet tech in school. Being the only male for four years only to be sexually harassed, insulted, and talked down because I was the only outlier in my class. It only made me realize the way my parish treated the sole female in agricultural mechanics, automotive repair, and forestry was much alike to how I was treated as well. I just couldn't imagine facing that every single day, every single hour of my life. And there were probably some situations that made you feel uncomfortable that you have tried telling yourself were totally benign, but you just couldn't shake the discomfort and may have even felt bad for thinking something wasn't quite right. I had a similar experience as the, or one of the, only guys in a professional setting. I have never let go of that to remind myself to be aware of things that might not bother me but could really ostracize someone. And my wife confirms women deal with this constantly in so many more settings. Having to deal with those kinds of people who DM you random shit must feel like a snowstorm after getting thousands of DMs because of mentioning that you're a girl. And also, the fashion might be an issue as well. It may be a pain to not have pockets for a phone or wallet. Trust me, having no pockets is 10 out of 10 pain in the ass, especially when you want to carry a lot of junk around. And yeah, creepy DMs are being afraid to come on the mic sucks too. I have met a couple women in my life who have endometriosis and they describe how bad the pain is. Felt really sorry for them and would hate to go through something similar. Sexual harassment, assault, and rape are staggeringly common occurrences in women's lives. Family, friends, coworkers, students, I've heard accounts from so many of the women in my life and it is infuriating. Someone claiming to be a female Redditor once wrote that. In the back of their minds, whenever they're talking to any guy they don't know, most women are thinking, this guy could rape or kill me if he wanted to. Don't know if that's true or a reflection of that individual's paranoia, but it must suck to have anxiety like that if most women have it. I guess the male equivalent would be fear of a false rape accusation, but even that is something I never worry about when I talk with women. The only time I've ever felt threatened by another person was the one time I was violently robbed in my 37 years of life. In any other kind of social encounter I've had, the thought that the person I'm talking to might be a physical threat to me is practically non-existent. And I say that as someone who is probably in the bottom 10% of men in terms of physical strength. But maybe I'm naive. I don't think that with men normally, but I reckon your experiences or knowledge would shape that one. So there's probably a lot of women who do. The only time I have legit thought this guy could rape and kill me was when I was new at university. It was the man who drove one of the university's minibuses and I was the only passenger. He drove off course down this road into a rough looking area and past industrial kind of buildings. It was really isolated and no cars or people around. He glanced in his mirror at me and said, do you recognize this area? And I just put on a fake happy voice and said a lie like, I have been down here before, yeah, but is this a shortcut to the flats? And then he just talked about how he wanted to take a different route. Was weird AF, lol, but not sinister at all in the end. In today's world, wages are so low and costs of living are so high that it's no longer an option for most of them whether to work. And while I hope we can agree that women who want to have careers should be able to, having to work sucks. Society has burdened them with the male curse but still expects them to do all the stereotypical female things. Be sexy, stay thin, keep a clean house, take care of the kids, serve as the social hub of the family. They're pulling double duty now. On top of that injustice, they're still underpaid and underpromoted. Finally, force them into work in most cases and be taken advantage of their relative disadvantage to lower their wages, but it also has damaged us men. There are exceptions, men in the middle, and I like to think I'm one. But capitalism has this effect of bifurcating us into two sets. One toxic masculinity, narcissist, and dangerous, the winners of this horrible economic system. The other, defeated, emasculated, and self-pitying, the losers of it. Menstruation, menopause, the gloops and the globs in between, being weaker than 40% of the population, 
not being able to get an abortion on demand, natural hormones, artificial hormones via birth control, artificially heavier periods if the birth control is copper UID, giving birth. Yeah, all in all, it sounds like a shit deal. Sorry, ladies. Sexual harassment slash assault. Between high school and college, I dated a lot of women. Some were just one or two dates and others were LTRs. And one thing goddamn every single one had in common, like this is not even an exaggeration, every single one had at one time or another in their life felt really creeped out by some sketchy ass dude. What really hit home was realizing that both my mom and sister are among these. Another crazy thing, a lot of times it happens more than once and it happens when they're young. I couldn't imagine being 11 years old and having an adult comment on my looks using words they would use on other adults. Being afraid of going anywhere after dark, especially alone. I already get a little weirded out by dark alleys, dark woods, strangers walking alone at night, etc. But I imagine if I was a girl, that would be 10 times worse. I don't want kids as a guy, but can't imagine how terrible it'd be to be pregnant. Like I imagine it was the alien chestbuster, but with your vagina. We had to watch a birth video in health class, and it was by far the most horrifying thing I've ever seen. How do y'all do that? Living in a world that wasn't built for you. To be told that you come second to men. To believe you must camouflage your individual identity and high intelligence to survive, and thus succumb to society's expectations. To consistently put up with creeps slash stalkers slash abusers, to always be on alert for danger. I could go on, but the horror stories I've heard of the female experience makes me ashamed of our world. Other women, seriously, hear me out. The cattiness and downright awful behavior between other women on how they treat each other, all I have to say is good God. The fact that they can get attacked by men so easily, especially if alone. You know how often I take night walks? Like three times a week at least. A woman could never cause she'd probably be attacked. I know a girl who was walking to her car after work late at night and got jumped by a dude and she was so defenseless, I walked to my car late at night with zero thought that someone is going to run up and beat my ass or even rape me. I feel bad for women simply for that. There's more, but them needing company past night is the worst in my opinion. Literally everything but potential for great sex. I get the sneaking feeling it's just better for women with the right partner than it can ever be for a man. Everything else sounds horrible though. The constant emotional heightened mental state. I'm quite subdued as a guy. Calm, quiet, just chill as fuck. From the women I have talked to, their brains are like 110 miles per hour all the time with no breaks except when they orgasm. And then the brain goes, the fuck? And has to reboot or when they're asleep. Honestly, I couldn't deal with that sort of stress and would have a heart attack almost immediately. Paying for medically necessary hygiene products and paying taxes on hygiene products that aren't taxed for men is pretty bad, but I'm gonna go with routinely being sexually harassed when you go outside. I feel like being a woman is kind of like being the new guy in prison. Like you don't know who's the nice one, the cool one, the creepy one, etc. Like you just have to find your way over time and get used to the joint. I don't know, maybe a bit pessimistic, I'm just guessing here. Assuming sexual violence isn't a thing because I still live in the same place and periods have already been said and I don't plan on having children. I guess hygiene and fashion stuff, getting dressed in the morning, I wouldn't wear uncomfy stuff, but still, women just wear more and they're still always cold. That said, I'd have an even better reason to never leave my house without a pepper spray and I'd probably use it more often. Honestly, I'd probably knock anyone out that touches me accidentally and stab them with my stilettos. Let's be real, periods and giving birth may suck, but the worst thing by far is having to always be aware and alert with your surroundings because you could be assaulted at any time. How much more complicated your life will probably be. Societal pressures slash expectations are more varied, but acceptable lifestyle slash choices tend to be more structured. On top of that, there appears to be more criticism of reasonable choices from others that have made different reasonable choices. Concern for safety will affect more of your decisions, 
The female body is just more complicated, more health concerns, more things can go wrong, menstrual cycles and hygiene complicate schedules, and can cause huge variations in day-to-day -day and long-term well-being. Even with all the added burden, my wife says that the very few mothers would seriously consider trading away the feeling of having a baby growing within them. Miscarriages. Saw my mother go through many of them. I can't imagine the pain and sorrow. I can't relate or fathom in any way. I also couldn't comfort her. That's got to be the most difficult thing I'll never experience. I know a woman who had seven miscarriages. She kept trying to get pregnant for lots of years. Last year, she got pregnant again and gave birth to two twin boys. They're now three months old and have yet to see them. Actually having to care about how you look. For me, it's just jeans and a shirt. I don't think I could stand having to spend 30 minutes to leave the house getting ready. That or the fact that they aren't very direct. Girls for some reason are very passive aggressive. Periods. And it disturbs me how often women feel unsafe alone in the streets. I'm a tall, muscular dude, so I'm generally left alone. But I was genuinely disturbed to hear such stories from female friends of mine. I never let any of them walk back to their car alone at night. I'll walk with them to be sure they're left alone, no matter how much it will force me to walk back to my own place. The way women are too often not taken seriously and treated like they're not supposed to be able to know what they're talking about. Not everyone does this, of course, but it's a downright shame how much of it I've seen with my own eyes. As an introvert, the thought that scares me is people trying to pick me up. Men don't get picked up, so I'm safe here, but I know I'm gonna be hot as fuck as a woman, so I definitely get picked up all the time. And knowing me, they're somehow gonna lead me into a hotel without me being able to say a single word. Periods, being scared when outside at night alone. As a guy, I don't worry about that and do it in inappropriate ways, not taking no for an answer and sending unsolicited dick pics, no pockets in clothes, occasional sexism, having to deal with stereotypes such as being very complicated, hard to understand, overly emotional, and all that nonsense. Also being underestimated as far as professional skills are concerned. I'm not the biggest guy or the smallest, but there have been situations where I felt uncomfortable knowing the people around me could just turn on me at any moment and I'd have no physical advantage. I can't imagine what it's like for girls. There is still an exception that guys won't just attack you and they do get a little bit of a pass, but still dangerous as fuck to be a girl alone. Constant state of fear and worry about safety. I have been in a combat zone and I felt safer than my GF felt going to Target on a Saturday afternoon. She was always thinking about her safety. Women have to choose between backstabber friends and friends with hopes of sex in the future. This gay best friend stuff used to sound weird to me, but that's kind of the best friend a woman can have. Not wanting children. No one cares because I'm a man, but I've read stories about women's experiences trying to get permanent birth control. I was going to say that I would hate being called names for doing the same shit I currently say with no consequences. However, I just saw the top comment, and yep, period sound horrible. Cramps. You know what those are? Labor pain. They have labor pain every freaking month. Age 12 through 70. Why are uteruses so angry? The uncertainty of why someone is treating you a certain way. Are they helping because they're nice, or because they want something, or because they're sexist? Did I get the job because I was the best candidate, or because they wanted a woman on the team. Having all thoughts and feelings being so connected to other thoughts and feelings, even if they are completely unrelated. Sounds like a neurotic mess, an IDK how I'd ever concentrate. I like my nothing box. Dealing with men, because that's where most resistance will come from when trying to work. There's also everyone disguising when they're pursuing you for a personal relationship too. For women though, it's very important to actually say you're not interested in someone rather than milking someone's romantic interest, unless you're actually reciprocating their advances or gifts. But there's a huge chance that most people who don't make their intentions known immediately are interested in the things they can't buy, so you have to be careful. Or periods. It's like knowing that for one week a month, you're not going to feel 100%, and 
and that nobody will take much notice. But being a woman affords a lot of leeway and favored by men and women in a male-dominated world. Okay, I don't even need to think about this. I'm FTM trans, and in my opinion, it would be dysphoria. If you are physically, biologically, a woman, you are still technically a man. Dysphoria would probably be a pretty big thing in your life. Almost 50 years ago, I was suffering from deep depression. So I went to the shrink at the university I was going to, BYU. It came out that I was gay, and I soon realized it was an environment problem, not me. But before I realized that, the shrink confused being gay with being transsexual. He thought I wanted to be a woman and have those lady bits and periods. In fact, he talked a lot about the problems associated with having periods. I finally figured it was him and his nonsense that was tainted by religion. That was the problem left the whole mess and healed myself. I am still turned off by the femboy scene. That's partially true. In some countries, women have so many rights, it's actually annoying. But in other countries, women are oppressed, controlled, have little to no rights, and are not considered citizens of the country. I wish there was a balance. They are incredibly slow to react to any external stimuli and most times do not have common sense and logic to react accordingly. I find that to be both very disturbing and annoying at the same time. Not taking the time to know the male perspective while coasting by using looks as a means of charm to men until I get old and it runs out. I'd imagine though, cleaning a vagina isn't an easy task. Whenever I clean my dick and balls, I just give it the old foam and fondle as I'm washing the rest of my body. It's a pretty quick process. I've had a few sexual partners in my time and have learned that some vaginas can run deep. I feel like getting all the way up in there to properly clean it is quite the hassle. Turning 38, that's the cutoff for female attraction. I used to work in an adult dating website and at 38 is the year that men simply stop messaging women and the women now have to message the men. The data doesn't lie. A family member of mine had endometriosis, just fucking brutality each month. How the fuck does someone romanticize that? I feel her pain. I had endometriosis as well, and it sucks. Half the time I have to call out of work, and not just because of the cramps, but because my stomach swells so much, I look about 4-5 to five months pregnant and can't fit any of my clothes. Birth control kind of helps. Mainly with the fact I'm on the pill and my doctor recommends me skipping the sugar pills for a month or two, which means no period for a month or two. That way, I can work and go through everyday life without crying my eyes out or hitting the floor over the intense pains. My boyfriend of over two years almost cries every time it's my time of the month because he feels so helpless and knows there is nothing he can do to make the pain stop. The romanticized ideas of them infuriates me since I don't want children. Have my tubes tied and an IUD. Sweet. Pain, blood, being irritated by my own irritations, and depression for absolutely no good reason. I've even tried to talk to my doctor about getting endometriosis ablation to no avail. They argue that I might change my mind about children and could still get IVF with tied tubes. You'd think being 31 and having gone through surgery for it would be proof enough I don't want kids. But nope, gotta bleed for the patriarchy. I walked with a man today, about a mile to a restaurant, after dark. We had two options. One was a poorly lit residential street. The other was beside the main road with restaurants here and there and some traffic, but not a lot. Car every 30 seconds or so. But also the one more likely to be populated by homeless people. There are a lot in our area, and I 100% am not trying to say that all homeless people are dangerous. We tried going the back way, which was where I felt safer, as in my experience during daylight, it's all residential, and you're unlikely to meet another person at that time of night. But ultimately, walked most of the way there and back on the main road. Why? Because the back way sidewalks were uneven and he tripped. He tripped. This was a walk I would never make myself after dark because I'm a woman, but men get to make their decision based on how dumb they are with their feet. Probably being afraid of being raped, having to live with the fact that there's so many sick people out there. Yup, 
The constant looking over shoulders whenever we're walking anywhere in public, always coming up with plans for how we can get out of a scary situations, holding onto my keys inside the purse in case I need to use a weapon, got a lot worse after I was sexually assaulted twice in the same year. The fact that the people around you will consider you hysterical every time you disagree with someone and defend your opinion. It's also telling that hysterically comes from the Greek word for uterus. Shit's been baked into our culture for a millennia. Probably the societal pressure. Spending ages on beauty regime sounds like a pain in the butt. If I were a man becoming a woman, I'd guess probably the hormonal differences. I doubt my testosterone brain would handle a relatively massive estrogen influx all that well. My beauty regime consists of showering, brushing my hair, brushing my teeth, washing my face, and dressing in something that isn't ugly. Sometimes I'll add things in, but usually just for special occasions, like a party or something. From what I've heard, people undergoing male to female hormone therapies often speak of how incredibly freeing it is once they lower their testosterone levels significantly. Reduction in intrusive thoughts of sexual nature, less aggression, etc. I guess makeup and shaving basically everything would be optional, but most seem to do it, and I imagine that would suck. I mean, technically, it's optional, but we get a lot of shit if we don't shave. Shaving your legs is an absolute pain in the ass. Being physically weaker, smaller, slower, and less physically tough and hard, this between the periods, hormonal issues, and biological weakness, I honestly feel like I'm a member of the inferior gender. Being pressured to climb a corporate ladder and feel bad for wanting to be a stay-at-home mom if you choose to do so. I don't think this is exactly different for men. Men are also pressured to succeed, and wanting to be a stay-at-home dad is barely even a thought, much less seriously considered or actually done outside of very rare circumstances.